Thank you, Vincent, and thank you, Anna Marie. Um, it's a pleasure to be with everyone this morning, this afternoon, wherever you might be. Um, so thank you for the warm welcome. And you know, continuing on Delores' wonderful discussion, you know, my conversation I'm bringing to you is another view, um, something to be aware and consider of in your work. And it's really around the theme of inequality in the financial markets. Um, and Anna Marie also highlighted this, the opportunity for transdisciplinary work. Um, you know, highlighting that throughout my conversation with you, I think has a lot of merit. Um, Vincent mentioned, I work at Calvert and Peck Capital. Um, we are a global financial firm, although I'm based in the US. And we've been around for about 25 years, um, advocating and supporting investors to invest both for financial return and intentional, measurable, positive, positive impact on people and planet. And we're focused on this because today, what we see is the financial system's default setting is return is paramount. And not only is that the default setting, but the whole system beneath the financial markets, the ecosystem that supports the financial markets is based on this. So the regulatory infrastructure, the models that people use for decision-making all reinforce that financial return is paramount. However, I think it's becoming very well known, at least in the world I work in, um, even if we don't wanna fully acknowledge it, that all investments have impact. Um, positive, negative, perhaps neutral, but they impact the people and planet. Um, and what is clear, I think, today more than ever is we need to align our global efforts for sustainable outcomes, the work that collectively we're all doing, um, with that fuel, that money that drives development. Um, and so to do that, we do need to think about how to augment regulatory infrastructure how to get community voice from Dolores, as you mentioned, from the community uh, where the money is moving, where the work is impacting up into the system. And we need to change the financial markets. Um, so I'm coming to you as a practitioner. Um, I work to move the money into markets. I work with investors. I work with communities. I see us as the bridge that connects them both. And so I wanted to share with you today um, why we need to get this private capital, the financial markets working in a more heartfelt way, looking at both impact and financial return. Um, I wanted to share with you how money moves. Um, it's a bit opaque, I think, if you don't work in the markets. And what I find is, is as you know how money moves, you can understand the challenges that are holding it back from being more positively impactful, and then think about opportunities where your work can intersect with this issue and really change the private markets for good. Um, Fabio, if we could go to the first slide, please. Thank you. And so the why. Um, this graph might be different, but I think the theme is familiar to this group. Um, what it's saying is the government and philanthropic resources are not enough to address the global challenges. Um, and what you see on the left is the private capital. It's 70 trillion of assets that we can unlock for good to meet the sustainable development goals. Um, that's the target that the financial markets are starting to move towards to measure their social and environmental progress. And I think that's a universal goal that we're all working to is the sustainable development goals to by 2030 be in a place where we have a healthy planet and a just planet for all people and beings. Um, the reality is if you look at this graph, um, we need to engage that private capital um, because the annual philanthropy, that annual global giving you see and government resources are 30 times too few to meet what we need to invest annually to reach the SDGs. Uh, more important I also wanna highlight is that not only do we need to change future flows of capital, we have to make sure that the current financial markets do better, they sustain, they don't continue to degrade with the investments they're making. And so 
those two are very important as we move forward. And Fabio, as we go to the next slide, I wanted to talk a little bit now, moving from the why to the how. So how does money move into investments? So what you see again is that 70 trillion on the left, the global assets under management. That's what we want to unlock for positive, intentional, measurable good. Right now, those assets in general move into three different types of markets. The public markets, which I think people are very familiar with. These are the listed stock exchange where you can buy a share of a company, purchase a listed bond. Private markets where you can invest privately, debt, equity, and real estate projects with your money. And then finally, maybe not so articulated in the darker gray box are overlooked markets. These are the markets that we at Calvert Impact Capital focus on. It's the markets that likely touch a lot of your work as well. And then they're, they're the markets that the financial system today doesn't reach well. They don't access well. And so as a result, they remain undercapitalized. Um, what you see are the barriers on the right there in the public and private markets. Uh, the big barriers to sustainable investment is transparency, accountability, and the tools to address that is additional education and data. In the data piece, I think there's a lot to be said here where with the work you're doing, being able to set up that work so it can feed into the data needed for the financial markets to create measurable and intentional accountability for companies is a real opportunity. Um, you know, one of my mentors said once, accounting is destiny. And where these markets are moving now real time is not only to have transparency around their financial uh, results, but also the externalities, the true cost of running their business, the environmental impacts, their environmental footprint, what they're leaving in the earth as they do their work. There is a movement underway to ensure that that is accounted for in financial statements as well. Um, there's the impact weighted accounts you can look at. It's coming out of Harvard Business School and George Serafin. SASB, S-A-S-B, the Sustainable Accounting Board. It's been in existence for about 10, 15 years, and they're creating the financial framework um, to measure this. In the overlooked markets, the, the challenge is access. We need more infrastructure, more plumbing to move money out of investors into these opportunities. These opportunities are investing, for example, in a local cooperative in Peru. Um, it could be a recent example would be a blue bond. Um, the Seychelles, the government, the Seychelles issued. Um, they use the proceeds of that money to uh, develop their blue economic plan but the capital they raised through that blue bond, they had an access issue. And um, we see this often. So the tools to address this are building out that infrastructure, again, education, and creating a stronger enabling environment. Fabio, if we could go to the next slide. I wanted to go a little deeper into these overlooked markets because they're a bit more opaque. You know, the public markets I think people are familiar with um, there's stock exchanges, there's transparencies, you know how to put money to work. Um, the private market's a little bit more opaque, but still um, there's more transparency and access into those investments. The overlooked markets, what we find is there's many layers of intermediation, many players that carry a dollar out of investors' pocket into the global community, into the investment in the forest, into the investment of the people at the end of the day. And that's because they are farther removed. Um, they might be not as well known as investment opportunities. Um, the market still struggled with the idea of investing sustainably in forest. And so what we see is a dollar, if you start on the left, will travel to an advisor who makes recommendations of how to invest that dollar. They'll look then for market-facing intermediaries, which is products and services that they can invest that client's dollar into. That market-facing intermediary then looks to invest in a local community. And then that local community, which is a local financial institution, may be located in Mexico 
or in another emerging market, invest in people and businesses. So you can see it's a lot of chains of capital that you know, are, are moving these dollars into community. Um, and what we find is these break down, that they're not well developed. Um, in a sense, if you think visually, the piping carrying the money isn't big enough to meet the demand in these communities. So they're underfunded, undercapitalized. The next slide, I just give a real life example of this so you can visualize it. This is a company, a group we work with, Finance in Motion. Um, it's a German fund manager. Um, and they have multiple funds. One of them is the one on the slide, the Eco Business Fund. And the Eco Business Fund is a market facing intermediary. And their goal is to lend to local financial institutions in Latin America that are lending to small and medium businesses that are creating financial return, but also are intentionally aware and measuring the impact on the environment, both. And so what they do is two things. One is they provide the capital to accomplish that, but two, they also provide a considerable amount of technical assistance, support to help yeah, these businesses to meet those environmental standards, to learn as a cooperative, say, in one of these markets, how to have better sustainability practices in water conservation or soil degradation. So it's both capital and support that's being provided. So my last slide is just to give maybe a ray of hope and a moment of action. Um, the good news is the, this system is evolving. We are not there yet, though. Um, on the left is a um, compelling graphic, I think. Um, there's a new movement that just started this week called Imperative 21, hashtag reset, if you want to look at it. And it's on the 50th anniversary of Milton Friedman's doctrine of uh, shareholder primacy, if you're a economic wonk, really saying, hey, that doesn't work anymore. We need to reset our financial system to be just. And on the left, I just share a little bit of the movement that I'm seeing that's putting us in the right direction. It gives me hope that we're on the right path. The other thing that I think is really timely with this conversation is because we are in a moment of crisis from COVID, from inequities, as Delore said, um, it can make change. We have a moment to indeed reset. Um, I find the education is accelerating around this issue, and so it really gives us a great opportunity to move across silos of work and find holistic solutions, because we know these are global problems that are interdisciplinary in their, in, in their makeup. So with that, I close and thank you and turn it back to you, Anna Marie, for questions.